God gives us beauty for ashes, and we're so glad that you're joining us for Hope today. And we love to spend these 30 minutes with you to uplift, to encourage, and to inspire you. I'm here with Tom Hollis. Amanda's not here with us today. She is off today. And Tom, tell us about our guests because they're going to be sharing about their story and what God is doing in their lives. Well, encourage and inspire is what we're going to find out about because Tracy Scott and her daughter Alicia McConnell will be with us and they have a powerful story of miracles. You're gonna to wanna to see it. You're gonna to wanna to believe that there's a God who does miracles right now in the present day. And I love that. I love that he's the God who said it. He's the God of I am, not I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not that he used to do miracles and we'd say, talk about those. He's the God that does miracles today. Yeah, he's truly doing miracles all around us. And you know, I've just been in a season where I've just seen God just moving mightily in the hearts and the lives of people. I was like recently at a gathering, speaking of miracles, I mean, I saw blind eyes open, deaf ears, I mean, excuse me, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, you know, tumors disappearing, just so many things that God is moving in the midst of his people. So we are truly in a move of God. And maybe today that you are in need of a miracle. And we just wanna let you know that we are always here for you 24 seven with our prayer line at 888 Six six five four four eight three. So God is moving mightily. I know something, Tom. You want to bring up? Is this a way God is moving in a particular TV show about well, American Idol? You know, uh, American Idol is, is such a phenomenon, and uh, Jean and I like to watch it because we like to, we like to hear the, them do well, and, and we like to hear their stories. They're tremendous at, the, at telling the stories. But uh, the, the the final two, Megan Danielle and I am Tongi, who is a Hawaiian. He actually won, but Megan Danielle, she. Uh, had this gravelly voice, it was so great. But she uh, said that she wanted to sing the word of God and bring the word of God. And uh, Jean did a little research and found out that uh, she was challenged by uh, someone in her life that she needed to sing for God. And uh, she, she did, I mean, and she, she gave testimony to the Lord all the way through. Uh, you see this young girl with this gravelly kind of uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt style voice. It was, it was great, great to see that. And she got to sing with Lauren Daigle last yeah. night, which was one of her, uh, her heroes uh, uh, in uh, Christian music. Well, I just love, you know, God is moving in the midst when it comes to music and entertainment. It just reminds me of an event I went to this weekend. So she was on The Voice, such as a young woman, her name is Mia Z. And there was at like at Petra they had, it was called the Freedom Experience. It was all Generation Z, just like sharing their testimony, sharing what God's in their lives. They were singing, there was just different things. And I just love hearing what God does in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of no matter what our circumstance we're moving, going through. So that's just really, encouraging to see. I just know that God is truly moving in arts and entertainment. He's doing a thing. So don't get discouraged if you're out there with like parents and grandparents. You're like, what's happening with this generation? Listen, God is in the midst and he is doing something miraculous. He is doing something wonderful. And I think it's important for us to remember that God does have a different ways that he moves in different generations and he is moving in young people today. And we're excited to, to hear about that. We're gonna hear about how he moved in Tracy and Alicia's lives after we come back from this break. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which present scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Well, hope does happen here and hope happens in our God and our God is the God of miracles. The Bible is filled with all kinds of powerful works of God. For some of us though, we still wonder if God performs miracles nowadays. The short answer is yes, yes he does. And our next guest, Tracy Scott and Alicia McConnell are proof that God performs miracles each and every day. Tracy and Alicia, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much for having us. Good morning, it's a pleasure to be here with you. 
Well, let's, let's start. Uh, I heard you guys speak, and I was, I was just touched with your stories. You came to our church, and you shared, and I was so touched, and I thought, we've got to hear these stories. We've got to hear your stories uh, from, from both of your perspectives on, uh, on Cornerstone. So, Tracy, tell me a little bit about you know, your story. How did you grow up, and where did you meet God? So, I was blessed to be raised in a Christian home, and I've always believed in God, always trusted Him, but there was a lot of religion mixed in with that. So unfortunately, I had a very distant relationship with God. Um, I didn't have the best childhood. There were some abuse cases and different things, and it made uh, my perspective of God twisted, you know, and yeah. as a father. And, um, but He was still good to me, and I still loved Him. Um, but I'll jump ahead to where uh, I met my husband. And, um, I fell in love with him. We got married pretty quickly. But before we got married, um, because of the way I had been abused, I really felt my worth came from my body. You know? And so I made a lot of mistakes. And I got pregnant before I got married. And we were scared. We were very, very scared. We didn't know what we were going to do. Um, and we decided to have an abortion. And so I went to the clinic. Um, and it's not like what you think. <laughs> they don't talk to you at all. You're just kind of in and out. And I remember seconds after it was over, I thought, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. And I felt very unworthy and unloved from that point forward. Um, it left such a scar on my heart, I can't even explain. I didn't think it would ever heal. Um, but God was gracious to me. I still got married, and he gave me three beautiful children. I didn't feel I deserved them. Um, and it was a secret that only my husband and I knew. So sometimes those secret sins destroy you from the inside out. Um, but God was still very good to us. Um, and we, like I said, we got married. I had three beautiful children. Um, we had our ups and downs, but life was generally good. But then when my son turned three years old, he started limping really bad. Um, we didn't think a whole lot of it because he's a kid, you know, <laughs> boys will be boys. And um, we took him to the doctors. He had a sprained ankle, took him back a couple weeks later because it wasn't getting any better. Same um, thing. He just has a sprained ankle. Try to keep him from moving very much. Well, it's impossible to keep a 30 year old boy from moving very much. Um, so the third time we took him back, they said, well, he has a couple bruises. How long do you think um, they've been there? And I said, I don't know, maybe a week or so. Um, and they started running some blood tests and they said, you need to get him to Children's Hospital right away. And I said, why? Is it his hip? Is something wrong? And they said, we, we think he has leukemia. Wow. And instantly, like, my world just stopped. And instantly, my sins of the past said, you deserve this. You know, because that's what religion does. And that's what the enemy does. He tries to convince you you're not worthy of God's love. And so, so, and so even though you had had three beautiful children and you... You still had this from the past, this exactly. like weight on you from right. the past that, that the devil just jumped right on when as soon as you had a problem. Yes, yeah. give him a little inch and he'll take a <laughs> yard, you know. And it, and it was really hard because the whole ride to the hospital, that's all I thought was like, this is my payback. I'm finally paying for what I did. And I was begging God, I said, don't do this to my son, put it on me. And it was so hard. So we got him to, to um, Children's and they said, he's really bad. He may not make it, you know, might not even make the night. And I was like, oh my word. And so um, we finally got to a room, but they put him in an isolation room. And my husband went home because we had two daughters. And um, I remember just being up all night, just sitting there talking to God. I'm like, Lord, I know we don't know each other well. At least I didn't know him very well. Um, but I just can't understand why a good God would put this on this child. And I just poured my heart out to him. And I said, Lord, I love him so much. I would die for him. And that was the first time I've ever heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. He said, I love him so much I did die for him. Mm -hmm. And that just started such a love relationship with me and Jesus. Because one, I never really heard him speak to my, my spirit before. And two, to think that he loved him more than I did. And it started to crack my hard heart from that point forward. And he said to me, if you trust me and believe me over everything else, you're going to see a miracle here and you're going to take this to the nations. Well, I I didn't see how or understand any of that, especially because I was very shy at that point, didn't like to talk to anyone, but he did. And, you know, I just started seeing miracles after miracles. You know, one night they said, he's not going to make the night. His heart will stop. They brought the crash carts in and here he is three years old. And um, I just started praying and declaring the word. I, I saw scriptures like I'd never seen them before, you know, like by Jesus stripes, he is healed. God sent forth his word and he healed him. And I'm like, wow, Lord, you really care about the entire being. And so 
we just saw miracle after miracle after miracle. But it was, um, the doctor said he's gonna go through a three and a half year chemo treatment plan. That's a long time. <laughs> and they said he's gonna get more than 10 times the adult dosage of chemo. Um, he's gonna be really sick. He won't be able to move much. You know, he's gonna have a lot of bad side effects. God was teaching me and I was hungry. <laughs> and so I just started taking God's word. I put a little sign on the door, please no negative words past this door. God's working a miracle inside. And people honored that. And so my son never heard anything negative and he was never upset. He never refused to go to treatments. Um, and God just met us where we were. I will say about six months later, it was Mother's Day. He couldn't move, he couldn't feed himself. And I was concerned because he had never been to this degree. You know, he had lost his hair by this time. And the doctor said he should have been like this the whole time. It's finally caught up to him. And my, my heart just broke. And I remember my daughters, we had just read the story about Joshua. I'm and pretty sure we saw Veggie Tales, yeah. to be honest, with Larry the pickle and <laughs> marching around that wall of Jericho. And they said, won't we lay him on the floor and march around him and seven times and just sing and praise? And I'm like, okay. And thankfully nobody threw slushies at us. <laughs> <laughs> so we did, we marched around him seven times. He couldn't move, so he just laid there. And we really just declared the word and just shouted and victory. And, and it's easy to get excited when kids are. And I'm like, nobody thinks I'm foolish. <laughs> and, but you know what, the next morning he woke up perfectly fine. Ran out of bed, we went and got his treatments. The doctor said, I thought he couldn't move. I said, yeah, well, God's doing a miracle. I didn't really tell them how. <laughs> They would I don't have probably, know if we fully understood at that we point. Didn't. We well, really you were you were still believing God and receiving the treatments and kind of going down. Uh, I ended the, her twenties <laughs> with three kids. Yeah. I was twenty six at the time, and you know, um, but God met me where I was. You know, I really didn't have a lot of knowledge of His Word, or under, but I will say the one scripture that really stood out to me, and anybody that um, is going through chemo or anything, um, leukemia, I found out was. Um, a cancer that goes into the deepest part of your being. It goes into your bone marrow. And so um, they obviously can't take that out. But what was amazing to me, God showed me in Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrating to bone and marrow. Yeah. And that clicked because that's all I was hearing, marrow, marrow, marrow. And he said, I not only care about the spirit, I care about the body. And my word gets into the deepest part of your physical body and will change it. And it was just so incredible. And so after all this time, um, after the three and a half years were finally up, um, they said, you know what, we, they did um, a bone marrow test. Um, he would have to take 60 pills every day at home. Then he would get intravenous three to five times a week. I mean, it was a very intense treatment plan. But um, at the end, um, I was so excited. And we threw the biggest party imaginable, but they're like, it takes 10 years before he's considered healed. There's a very good chance this will reoccur. But from day one, I said, no, he's healed. And they kind of thought I was losing it. <laughs> but it was so incredible because um, a year later, they had to run all these tests on him. They said he would um, have reflex problems, learning problems. They would probably have to do some type of heart surgery, just all these things. And you know what? We just declared a, a, the word over him. And um, the Lord showed me about the one that came back. You know, the 10 <laughs> Right. Um, he said, you know, all, all 10 were healed, but the one that came back didn't have any side effects or problems. He was completely whole. So we just declared that. We said, we will always be the one that comes back. So when they did the testing, um, they did come in. They said, he's in the 0.01% that has not one bad side effect from all that treatment. I mean, God did it. You know, not only did he heal him, but he restored him. And he, he taught us how to stand on the word. Um, and, and so 25 years ago was August of this past summer that Sean was diagnosed. So we had another huge party and we got we to share the story time. all over wow. again. It's been 25 years. I think wow. the biggest thing to me was when he was first in the hospital, he was connected to all kinds of machines. And um, he said, can we dance mama? So I picked him up and we swayed. And the enemy said to me, enjoy it now because you'll never enjoy it when he gets to be an adult. And you know, and the Lord said, you have a choice, believe that or me speak what you want. So I said, okay. You know, I said, Shawnee, I can't wait till you're an adult and we get to dance together. And you know, in August on his 25 year um, anniversary, we danced to the same exact song. It was so incredible. And I said, you have, are watching a 25 year prophecy fulfilled today. What, what we spoke 25 years ago, God, God brought forth. It just excites me so much, but it was so incredible because God it showed me. The show. You don't dig up the seeds you plant in faith. Don't let <laughs> doubt dig up those seeds because exactly. 25 years later, we all got to witness that miracle. And, and another incredible thing was, you know, life went on and, um, but my oldest daughter about ugh, six, seven years later was diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, oh, wow. Can cancer really hit the same place? Or can lightning hit the same place twice? Um, but the Lord said, you know how to stand now. It's up to you how you want to fight this battle. 
So we just spoke over her. We took her to Children's and the same day she was diagnosed, she was healed and was sent home. And I was like, you're so good. But the Lord told me, it's up to you. You can fight this any way you want and I'll back you. And I said, let's do this quick. <laughs> let's just speak this word and get this up. And he, and he backed those words. It was so incredible. And even though I was seeing all these miracles and financially God was just doing incredible things. I mean, we went from the pit to standing on the mountaintop and it was just incredible, but my heart was never healed. You know, I was still broken inside and I still felt unworthy. I knew he loved my children and I felt like he loved me to a degree because he has to, he's God. <laughs> but I remember one time, I, was, I, I mean, I apologized for the abortion. I had probably a million times, but one time I was driving down the road and um, I was apologizing again. I'm like, Lord, I'm just so sorry. I'm just so sorry. And he finally, he started speaking to me again. He said, um, were the nails not big enough that went into Jesus' hands? I, was, I had no idea where he was going with this. I said, no, they were, Lord. And he said, did he need to take more stripes on his back? And I said, no. And he said, what about the thorns? Should they have been longer? And I'm like, no, Lord, it was enough. He said, that's right, it was enough. Let it go. You are forgiven. And I forget it until you keep bringing it back up. And he said, your children are in heaven, because I also had a miscarriage, excited to see you. They love you. They, they're excited to see you. And it just it was so freeing, because at that moment, I realized what Jesus went through was enough. I had never understood that before that. And I thought, he did it to save us. But it was to save every part of us. You know, it was to save not just our bodies and our spirits, but our souls, the souls that are broken and weary and self-inflicted wounds are the hardest to heal, let's be honest. And he did it in a moment when I realized the cross was enough. And so for me, it just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> God is really that good. And he has said to me freely, you know, you have received freely give. So that is like, one of my missions in life now is to see people set free, you know, physically in their soul and their spirit because he's that good and he loves us that much. And I always like to go back and say, you know, he loves us more than we love ourselves. You know, he loves our children more than we do. And it, as a parent, that's hard to understand, but it's real. It's true. You know, there, there, and Sid and I have seen this with, with people that have called in or people that we've talked to before. Sometimes those, even though we're Christians, there's that thing that just settles in our spirit, like you not feeling worthy, right, Sid? I mean, not feeling worthy to be able to, to receive from God. Right. But God sets you free. Totally and completely. And what he sets free is free indeed. I mean... For a while, it was hard for me to give that testimony because, you know, I felt like people would look at me differently. But I want them to look at me differently. I want them to say, look at what God can do and look at what he has done and what he'll do for me. He'll do for anybody because he does love us as a precious father. And um, I've seen it even in my family. You know, we've experienced other things that, you know, I like to say the devil likes to um, sucker punch us here and there. But you know what? God says, you know, if you fall down seven times, get up eight. <laughs> and that's what we do. And he always has our back. Absolutely. So let me ask you. So let's say there's somebody watching and they said, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't seen that, that side of God. I've had just one setback after another or one thing after another. What would you say to that person? In fact, I'm going to have you look into the camera, okay? And just okay. what would you say to that person that wants to believe and wants to trust in God? Um, Faith is complete and total trust in God. And it really is that simple. You just have to completely and totally trust him over doctor's reports, over um, what your family is saying, what the media is saying, and even over sometimes what your church is saying. You have to go with the word of God because he can't lie and he will back his word. Um, I like to say God has called us to be mountain movers, not mountain climbers. You know, we have to speak it out. And even with my son, um, it took 10 years for the doctors to agree with me that he was completely and totally healed. So in 10 years, I had a lot of times I could have went with what the doctors were saying or went with what some symptoms were saying. But when you choose to believe God above all else, he will honor that faith because faith moves the heart of God and he, he loves you so dearly. And when you understand the love of God, it's easy to receive from him because he just wants to shower you with everything that he's ever provided. And I just want to speak to those that are carrying um, soul wounds. Um, again, especially if they're self-inflicted or a family member has put them on you. Sometimes it's very difficult to let those go. Um, sometimes you think you've deserved them or that it becomes who you are. 
but it's not. God says that you are beautiful and dearly loved. You are forgiven. Um, he has great plans for you. Um, just because something bad has happened to you doesn't make that you. That was just an instant. Don't make it eternal. Who you are to God is eternal, and that's his precious child, and he will deliver you from everything the enemy brings against you. Um, he has defeated the curse, and he has passed that on to you. Wow. <laughs> uh, we want to just uh, say that that is the word for you today. You know, uh, again, this program is called Hope Today for a reason. It's not hope in my strength or Sydney's strength or Tracy's strength or Alicia's strength. It's the strength of Christ. It's the strength of God, the hope of God that uh, brings that uh, strength to you. Alicia, we're going to share your story on tomorrow's show and uh, going to be excited to do that. But Tell me, uh, what was it like to go through this with your brother and to see your mother standing on the word of God and to march around your brother? I mean, what was it right. like for you to grow up in that? So children are resilient. Um, and, you know, I think that oftentimes we forget that they really are taking in their surroundings. And I was fortunate that I inherited secondhand faith. Uh, my mother may have had her concerns and she may have had her moments of weakness, but in front of us, there were colorful signs that said, you know, no negative words spoken here. God's working a miracle. I remember the one time a doctor did come in and say something to my brother to the extent of, do you realize you could die? And his response was priceless. He's three. He was like, well, I'm just going to go to heaven. <laughs> like, <laughs> no heaven's deal. not a consolation prize. We weren't raised <laughs> to think that that was something that we needed to be afraid of. So there was absolutely this contagious joy and faith and you know, hope anchors the soul. And so I was really fortunate to grow up in that setting. It was not uncommon to hear worship music in the background or veggie tales playing <laughs> or to see a colorful Bible verse up somewhere. And all of those seeds were planted into my life. Um, just a brief part of my story, I laugh, my mom would always say, oh, I love so-and-so so much, I'd give them a kidney if they needed it. And then 25 years later, when I got ready to donate, Everybody said, well, why would you do that? I'm like, for 25 years, my mom said it. Like, I love so-and-so so much. I'd give them a kidney if they needed it. So Well, that's a I great tease for tomorrow's yeah. show. Let me tell you, you'll hear all about that story tomorrow. But uh, yeah, you know, that just that, that I love that um, legacy of faith, Tracy, that you are leaving. And you know, it's incredible. It, God is the one that personally taught me. You yeah. know, um, he kind I love church. Don't get me wrong. Church is amazing. But he actually got me out of church for a short period to undo some of the lies that had been planted in me. You know, and he did such a work. And uh, I know this goes along with her story that you're going to hear tomorrow. But to kind of start it out, um, God had put a man on my heart um, who lived in Florida. I'd never met him, but I knew his family. He was in his 50s and he was diagnosed with the last stages of cancer. And he said, I want you to go down and pray for him. And I hate cancer, so I love praying for people. But I was, um, Lord, I, I, I never leave Washington. I, I, I can't make it there. <laughs> I will get lost to never return. And um, he said, no, I want you to go. And it took me three days of debating. And um, I just wasn't sure what to do about it. But we can share that with Alicia's story because it goes along with that. But God has freely given us everything, so we will freely give back. So we can't wait to share with you our first mother-daughter trip to Florida. Well, this, this is an like extra tease for tomorrow's show, but we want to take this time uh, to pray and to believe for you. Uh, we just have a, a few minutes and you've heard a, a tremendous story. What is God saying to you? What are two things? What does God want to heal in your life physically? We're glad for you to call the prayer partners and we'll pray for that. But what does God want to do to undo things that the devil has sown in your life? Or maybe Christians or maybe even well-meaning people have sown wrong things into your life. God wants to set you free. You know, just as you were sharing your story, and I just want to throw it out there, too, that I, we had an opportunity to talk with Tracy and your daughter, Brittany, about their God story like many years ago. And you can go on our YouTube page. I mean, it is phenomenal what God is doing in this family. And I know right now there's so many families that are hurting. There's so many families that are grieving. There's so many families maybe right now that you are standing and contending and believing for a miracle for your loved one. Well, can you take their story as a sign to you today that if God did it for them, that he will surely do it 
for you too. God is no respecter of persons. And so we just know that in this season that there's been so many prophetic words speaking about family revival and what God is going to do in the midst of families. And I just really feel like that's so strongly in my spirit that God wants to move in your family like never before. Maybe it's not cancer. Maybe there's some division. There's a prodigal son or daughter, whatever it may be. Know that right now that God really wants to touch your family, touch your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren, whoever it may be, your husbands, your wives, and we're just gonna believe. And I just wanna pray really quickly for all the families that are out there. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the God of family, Lord God. In the beginning, you created a family with Adam and Eve and they had children and for generations and Father God. So we just declare and decree right now that every family that is walking through a hardship, for every family that is going through division, for every family that feels like they're facing the impossible, God, we know that you are the, impo you are the God of the impossible and all things are possible through Christ to those who believe. So today, Lord Jesus, we put our stake in the ground. We march around our own Jerichos in the same way that Sean was in the middle and they marched around. That God, we're doing that over our situations, over our families, Lord God, and we know that we are going to see victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And if that's you, Give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483 because here at Hope Today, we're all about family. You're part of our family and we want you to let you know that you are loved, that we are with you and that we stand with you no matter what you're going through. Well, again, we tremendously want to see incredible things happen in your life like what Tracy saw. Guys, thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing your story today. I know there's more, well, lots more to it. The television keeps us to just a, yeah. a short time, but uh, tomorrow you, you'll have a chance to share some more, and then Alicia will hear from you as well. I can't wait. It's a, it's a tremendous story. But God, um, you know, just one quick question. I need you to give me a 10-second okay. answer here. What should they do if they're having trouble stand, standing? Should they just declare the Word of God? Is that the best thing to do? When you feel like you can't stand, God will give you the strength to stand. Stay with the word of God. Watch what you let in your ears. Watch what comes out of your mouth because it's powerful. God says death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you can't stand, just lean into him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great word, great word. Yeah. So just today, like as you've been hearing the testimonies, is just standing on the word of God and leaning into him. And it reminds me of the scripture. It's one of my favorites from Proverbs 3, verses 4 through 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. and all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Just like Alicia said, lean on him no matter what the circumstance looks like. Because when we do, watch what he does in the midst of it. He has a miracle waiting for you. We love you. And join us tomorrow for Alicia's story.